that. Y'all, we are turning your Bibles over to Luke chapter number 10, all right? Luke chapter number 10, going to give you what God's given us. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let me say this to you. I want to put a damper on the service any which way. I've been praying. I know people have asked me about uh, we're going to start services back in the first of the year. I don't know. I tossed up to and fro every time I think we will. Something rises up. God just didn't give me a piece about that. Sickness is everywhere on every hand. I'm just not going to make a decision right now on that at all. So if we don't, I'm going to be cruci cruci uh, crucified <laughs> or I'll be criticized. And if I do, I'll be criticized. So either way, hey, it don't matter. I'm a winner either way. Amen. Uh, praise the Lord. I'm just being honest with you. All right. Uh, so I'm going to obey the Lord, and I'm going to do the best I can to uh, pass the church where God's given me uh, the ability to do. And so, look, I, I tell you this, I, you, you come out and you ask me if we're going to have church on Sunday night, and I come in and say, yeah, you'll be the first one who won't show up on Sunday night. Amen? I'll be honest with you. I just call it where it's at. Amen? Praise the Lord. So listen to me. Uh, enjoy what we got. Enjoy what time we have together. I, I told somebody today, if you wanted to go to church on Sunday night, there's a preacher somewhere preaching on a Sunday night somewhere. Amen? Uh, it just gives us time. So I don't know what we're going to do, and uh, but right now we're going to continue like we're going, okay, uh, into that. So just giving you sort of some insight what's going on. Praise the Lord. Uh, Y'all pray for me. Amen. Pray for me. Hey, God will do what needs to be done there. All right. Over in the book of Luke, chapter number 10. Amen. In the book of Luke, chapter number 10, we're going to be talking to us this, today about a, a good Samaritan. Amen. I'm glad I run into one of them. Come on, y'all. I'm glad I run into one. I'm glad one of them run into me. Y'all know who that was? <laughs> Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. So we're going to get here. Y'all pray for me. I already feel the, 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 the all this mess, and it's not comfortable when I'm trying to preach and uh, with my throat like that, but it's okay. I'm going to give you all I can, and they, Lord, do the rest of it, okay? Praise the Lord. The Bible says this in verse number 25. Uh, of, of over in Luke chapter number 10. The Bible says this, And behold, a certain lawyer stood up and tempted him and said, Master, what shall I do uh, to inherit eternal life? In verse number 26, and he says, What is written in the law? How readest thou? He answered and said, this, uh, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy strength, and with all thy mind and thy neighbor as thyself. Now, if you look at that, he, he took two different verses and put them together there and wrote that and said that. And then verse number 28, and he said unto him, thou hast answered right. This do and thou shalt live. Amen. Now, some people say that uh, Jesus wouldn't mean in uh, salvation there, but uh, at that time, you got to realize the law hadn't been fulfilled yet, all right? So a lot of people look at that and say, when he says, what shall I do to be saved? He's got to do something. Well, that's what the law was. You had to do something, amen? You had to do what the law said and all that. But understand that this time, uh, Jesus was walking amongst them. Now, also remember who's talking right here to him. When it says it was a lawyer, he was a lawyer, but he wasn't what we call a lawyer said sitting in a courtroom to judge in, uh, uh, the judging like they judge in a courtroom. He was a lawyer of the law of the book. Amen. It's who he was. He knew the law. He knew what the law said, and he was trying to catch Jesus to find out how what he thought about the law. Amen. So what Jesus done, he went back and asked him a question with a question. And then <clears throat> him going to uh, uh, try to uh, uh, talk to him here anyway. In verse number 29, the Bible says, and he, uh, but he willing to justify himself said unto Jesus, and who is my neighbor? And Jesus answered and said, a certain man went down to Jerusalem, uh, to Jericho, and fell among uh, thieves uh, uh, and stripped him of his raiment and wounded him and departed, leaving him half dead. Bible said in verse number 20, uh, 31, it said, And by chance there come down a certain priest by that way, and when he saw him, he passed by on the other side. Verse number 22, 32 says, and, and likewise the Levite, when he was at the place, came and looked on him and passed by on the other side. Verse number 33 says, But a, a 
uh, but a certain Samaritan. It says, as he journeyed, came where he was, and when he saw him, had compassion on him, and went to him and bound, and bound up his wounds, poured in oil and wine, and set him on his beast, and brought him into an inn, and, and, and took care of him. Let's pray. Father, God, we love you. We thank you today, God, for your love, your mercy, your grace. We ask you now, God, to help us to preach this word you've laid on our heart. God, we ask you to help the throat, Lord, whatever's going on, Lord, there. Just help us, God, to preach, God, your word. I ask you, Father, if there's one that don't know you from the free part of sin, God, that's lost, undone. God, I pray, Lord, to be this morning. God, will be the time they'd come to know you, Lord, as their personal Savior, dear Father. I pray, God, for some this morning, God, God, battling, oh, Lord, different things this morning, God, that you'd reach down, you touch, uh, you touch the, every individual in this place, God. And, and, Father, we just thank you, we love you, and we glorify your name. Now, have your way in this service. Uh, in Jesus' holy name we pray. And everyone said, praise the Lord. You may be seated, all right? <clears throat> Y'all pray for us. I tell you, when this stuff gets like that, it kind of closes up the airway, and when the airway, you can't breathe, and, and it just messes you up. Amen? Hey, what I'm going to do, I'm going I'm to loosen up some of this that way. <laughs> uh, praise the Lord. Amen. Uh, but anyway, he's going here and he's talking. I want to preach if I title this. <laughs> I made it here on this side for you. Amen. Uh, now, look here. We understand in the Word of God talked about how that he was talking about a good Samaritan. Remember, uh, the, the lawyer there, he was trying to justify and he was wanting to find out uh, how to inherit the kingdom of God. And then he began to tell them that how he loves to love the Lord. And and then after he talked about how to love the Lord, he said, you love thy neighbor as thyself. Amen? Along the way. And so I want to preach that this, this morning. I come, uh, I come here on this side for you. Amen? Uh, so many of us don't realize the pain and the, and the troubles and heartaches that some go through uh, to get where you are. Amen? I, I want you to look around every one of us this morning. In some way, some form, you need one another. Amen? Uh, every one of us has come through troubles and trials, and, and we've overcome things to make it where we are because somebody needs you this morning morning. Amen. Uh, but how many of us will walk by somebody uh, that's in a need of somebody that we need, all right? Uh, and as we look here now, and you thought the priest would have been very the one that would have run down there and said, hey, I come to help you. Amen. You're wounded and you're you're done up here, and I, I come down here to help you, but yet the, the priest uh, uh, saw him and passed on the other side. Amen. Uh, and, and so you think, boy, uh, the Levites, y'all know the Levites, y'all, we read about them how they was the first one that went back and they was able to go into the house of the Lord and, and go in and, and bring the stuff out of the house. Uh, they was the Levites, amen. Uh, uh, we understand they was of the priesthood. Uh, and you understand, you think, well, the Levites would be the very one that would have went over on that side to help them and, and do this to, to, wound, uh, to bind up some wounds, amen. But guess what? They wouldn't do it either, amen. Uh, but a good Samaritan come along down the road that day, uh, and, and Jesus was talking here, uh, some people said it's a parable, uh, and some people said it ain't a parable. I don't know. I wouldn't dare. Uh, uh, but I can tell you one thing. It sounds like a real story to me. Amen? Uh, of somebody uh, being that way. I can tell you, uh, my friend, I was one of them wounded. Uh, I was wounded one day, uh, and a good Samaritan come down the road where I was at. Amen? Uh, uh, boy, many people passed me up. Uh, uh, many people didn't have nothing to do with us. Uh, Y'all know what I'm talking about. Uh, uh, a lot of us have walked through trouble and trials to get to where you are today. Uh, but I'm going to tell you something, to my friend. Uh, as you walk there, you wonder how in the world or why am I walking through the troubles and the trials uh, that I'm walking through? Uh, why am I going through what I've got to go through? Uh, because somebody needs you down the road uh, of where you've been. Uh, you need to tell somebody what you've come through uh, because you made it there for them uh, to help them along the way. Uh, church, we all in this thing together. Uh, and we need somebody that, that I can hold on to and ask them, are you sure that I'm going to be all right, Brother Kenneth? Yeah, you're going to be all right. I've been there. I walked through it. That same God that helped me through it. It's the same God that helped you through it. But we don't know what somebody's facing today. We don't know what somebody's going through. It being heartache, being troubles, being somebody having trouble with their children or somebody having trouble with their spouse 
spouses or somebody having trouble with a health problem or whatever it may be. You don't know, but God knows. He's made it where you made it where you are. And here I am. I need help this morning. Uh, your neighbor needs help this morning. Uh, and I made it here uh, so I can help you. Uh, is anybody with me this morning? Go over there and pull the oil uh, and the wine. He could have done anything with that. But he chose to use it to honor and glorify God. So as we sit here and to help the, the brethren, amen, as we sit here and we look, not only did he do that, but the Bible said here is, um, and I got to find my place, amen, and the Bible said in here in, in, the, in, the, in the scripture, it said, but, the, uh, but a certain Samaritan, it said, as he journeyed, <clears throat> come where he was and when he saw him uh, he had compassion on him and went to him and bound up his wounds pouring oil pouring in oil and wine and set him on his beast and brought him unto an inn and took care of him amen not only did he just go over there and get him and, and doctor him up but he got him up put him on his beast his animal there and he took him up to a, a, a motel amen uh, just the way I can tell you the Bible said an inn I, I took him up there to an in. And not only did he do that, but the Bible said uh, he stayed with him overnight. How do you know that? Look what he said. He said, and tomorrow, when the mark come, he went up in there. Uh, and the Bible said he took care of him. Uh, and the, when the mark come, he went up to the host of the of the inn there. Uh, and he said he'd give him some money. Uh, and told him, he said, hey, uh, I want you to take care of him. Uh, and whatever you spend above what I give you are taking care of him. When I come again, uh, I'll repay you for what you've done or what you give him. My friend, we can't get nobody to help me in the situation or others in the situation today. That's what we're called to do. We're called to help one another. I don't care. Listen, you didn't go through what you went through just to God to have you to make it through it. But somebody's on the way behind you and they need help from you. And it says, it's each and every one of our trials and every one of our, our responsibility to help one another when we see somebody hurting uh, or in that place uh, and say, hey, uh, I'm a good Samaritan. Uh, I want to help you. I want to I want to help coach you and guide you uh, and bring you to the place uh, that we can be a help one to another. He was preaching. He said, you know, the Bible said, love thy neighbor to self. He gave an example. I heard this this morning. He gave an example. He said, there ain't no way you can tell me that you love your neighbor more than you love yourself. He said, I'll prove how. He said, I get up here and I get me a, 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 a big camera and I take a big picture of the whole congregation and I post it on the board. He said, who's the first one you're looking for? He said, you. If you, if you love somebody else, you should be looking for somebody else first. But you're looking for you first. So understand, we can't keep all the commandments like Brother Bobby's talking about all the law. We can't do all that perfect as we as we would want to. Amen. But what we can do is, is honor and serve God the way we should. Amen. And do the best that we can. Praise the Lord. As we look at these things, I want to read to you in Romans chapter number 12, verse 20. It says, Wherefore, if if thine enemy's hungry, uh, feed him. If uh, he's thirsty, give him drink. For in uh, so doing, thou shalt have heap coals of fire on his head. And verse 21 says, but not, uh, but not overcome, but be not overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. Amen? In other words, my friend, when you know you got somebody, that somebody don't like you, your enemy, when you do good to them, it's like taking a, a, a the Bible said, heaping up coals and putting them over the head. And, and you're sitting there and you, you're being good to them. You bless them and they don't like that. Amen? But boy, God loves that. Amen? And, and I thank God for that. I thought about over in uh, Genesis. How many remember? Remember uh, over there oh, uh, uh, talking about um, when you get over there talking about old Joseph. Any matter, remember old Joseph? I, I thought about Joseph now over in Genesis, and it's in chapter number 45 over there. You can find it and read it. Oh, Joseph, the Bible said his brothers didn't like him, they hated him. Because why? Because he had prophesied to them and told them, he said, one day y'all going to bow before me. Amen? And he didn't like that. They, they couldn't see down the road. Amen? Uh, and so they didn't like it, and they didn't like it because he had dreams, and they called him a dreamer. Amen? And they didn't like that. But God had a plan for Joseph, not only a plan for Joseph, but a plan for Joseph's brothers and his daddy down the road. Amen? I, and, and so now they sold him over there. If you remember, they went out, they, they, they sold 
sold him. I, uh, they took the coat of many colors and they dipped it in blood. Whatever come back said, hey, uh, something done ate him up. Amen. And they sold him into Egypt. Uh, uh, and when they done that, my friend, all that represents Christ along the way, by the way. Amen. And so they took him on over there and they got him in Egypt. And, and, and every time that the enemy would come against Joseph to try to hold Joseph down, God was on Joseph's side to bring him up. Did he not? Every time they try to bring him down, God brought him up. Got over and he become a second in charge in the, over in Egypt. Amen. And it come to time there was a famine in the land. And when that famine come and the family was taking the famine taking place, uh, the Bible said that Joseph, uh, uh, Joseph's daddy, Jacob, had sent the children, uh, his kids, back over there to Egypt to get some corn uh, to help them survive through a famine. Uh, and the Bible said he went over there. Uh, and a few times they went over there. Uh, and each time uh, Joseph recognized who they was, uh, and he would he would have stipulations about what was going on, and I ain't getting into all that. Uh, uh, but anyway, it come to a place uh, to where Joseph was going to reveal himself to his brother. Amen. Uh, and he got over there, and, and as Joseph began to talk to them, he, he was telling them, he said, I'm Joseph, I'm your brother. He said, but I don't want you to be upset or angry uh, uh, because you didn't, you are not the one uh, that put me over here. Uh, ain't you glad of that? Say, so sometimes we want to blame somebody else for where I'm at uh, or what's going on in my life. Uh, but my friend, the bottom line is, uh, it ain't their fault. Uh, uh, God had a plan uh, to get you somewhere uh, that you could help somebody uh, and bring them along out of the way. Uh, he said, don't be upset. Uh, it ain't your fault that I'm over here. Uh, it ain't, well, you didn't want to put me here. Uh, God did uh, because he knows that I had to be over here uh, to preserve life uh, uh, for you down the road uh, because if I wasn't over here, uh, you would die over there. Hallelujah. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you? So we need to get to a place to realize I'm here on this side because of you. God's put me over here to help you along the way. And realize that along the way, we don't know the cost. We don't know the pain. We don't know the agony that one has went through to get there. But all we know is they're there. Amen? That's hard, ain't it? Sometimes we sit here and wonder, why me, Lord? Why is it me? Why am I having to do this? God said, you know what the Word says? Because I know you. God knows what you can handle, knows what you can't handle. God knows how far to push you, how knows how far you can stand up. And you know what? Hey, some here today, my friend, I'm talking in, under the sound of my voice. And I'll be honest with you, it's been through hell. And I don't know other way to put it. Amen? It's been through hell. But you know what? You come out on the other side. You know why? Somebody's finna walk down that road. And you look at them and say, let me tell you something, honey. Our brother, just hold on. Weeping may endure for the night, but joy cometh in the morning. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you? But church, I'm telling you, we need to get to a place that we realize we're not in this thing by ourselves. I didn't go through this thing for myself. I went through this thing because God knowed I could bear it. He knowed I could get to a place and I could be a help to somebody. And let me say this to you. It ain't the ones you always want to help, but it's the one God's got a plan for your life. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you this morning? And my friend, when we get a hope to this place and we get to this place, we realize how God blessed. Don't you understand, Joseph? He didn't really want to be sold. No doubt about it. He didn't want to be done all that he went through. He didn't want to be lied upon. He didn't want to go up through all that. But boy, when it was said and done, Brother Lance, he was glad to be where he was. Because why? He loved his brother. He loved his daddy. He loved to know the one thing. I'm going to take care of them. Hey, they didn't bow to him because Joseph wanted them to bow to him. He bowed to him because God said he would bow to him. Are y'all hearing what I'm telling you today? We got to get to the place of church that we are here for one another. Don't cross the other side. You see somebody in a bind or a mess or broke down or wounded. Don't go to the other side and bypass them. Go to them. God's given you what it needs to get them up and bind them up. Pour the oil. What's the oil? It's the anointing power of God. In their life. Are y'all hearing what I'm You say, I ain't got it. Yes, if you got Jesus, you got all you need. If you're going, reading, and study, I pour in all that's the anointing of God. 
and alive. Pour in the wine, my friend. I'm telling you, when you do all these things and you put it together, you're not withholding back from God and holding back from the brothering. The Bible said, prefer the brothering. Does it not? Yes, it does. Boy, I can't help to go in. And I, I, I love preaching about this fellow. And I can't help for preaching on him. Amen. Over in 2 Samuel, chapter number 9, verse number 6, says the man called me feeble says. Y'all remember him? I love to preach about him. I feel like I'm him. I feel like I was him. Amen. I feel like I was down in Lola Bar in a place of nothing, in a place I had nothing. That's why me and him can connect so good. I was wounded. He was wounded. Remember, he was dropped when he was about five years old. And he was wounded in his feet and he couldn't walk. And they was, he was considered a, a, a no good. And they looked upon him as a dirty dead dog. That's what they looked upon him as. Are you hearing what I'm saying to you this morning? That's who I, that's who I, I used to be. Amen? That's exactly where I was. But thank God there was a king come looking for me. Hallelujah. Ain't you glad there's a king come looking for you? Hey, are you hearing what I'm telling you this morning? That ought to be exciting to you this morning. Let us know no matter who we was. You don't look up here and all yourself righteous and think, boy, I'm better than that. I come to tell you, you wouldn't know better than that. You was lost on your way to hell just like I was and everybody else in this place. The Bible said we were born as sinners. Hey, the only way we can get to heaven is through Jesus Christ. It's a no king. Hey, you hear what I'm talking about this morning? You know, me, Fable, found me, Fable said, was off down yonder in Lola Bar. And he didn't have anything. Hey, but I'm glad to know he had a he had he had somebody in his life. Are you hearing me? He had an ancestor he didn't done forgot about. Or he thought they done forgot about him. And the Bible said, I'm just gonna paraphrase it. The Bible said, Oh, though David went down there to him. Remember, he was a king. He went down there and he said, Hey. Are there anybody left to the house of Saul? He said, yeah, Jonathan had one son. He's named me Fable said. He said, where's he at? He's down there in a place of nowhere. It has nothing. There ain't nothing down there but a desert place. He said, I'm going down there, and I'm going to get him. He went down there, and the Bible said they went into me Fable said. He said, hey, son. He said, you got a king looking for you. He said, uh, who? A king looking for you. He said, I knew where the king come looking for me. I believe Brother Wayne had got him up because he couldn't walk. And he took him out. He, he, he hopped him along. And he got him before David. And he sat before David. When he got there, he bowed up on the ground. And old David stood him up. Hey, are you hearing what I'm saying? He says, son, let me tell you something. I come to restore. I come to give you back. I come to give you what's yours. Hey, I was down there. And oh, God, come along one day. Jesus broke out and come down in the Lola bar and pull me up. And sanctified me. Whoa, hallelujah. And brought me where I'm at and delivered me. And I had nothing but now. I'm a child of God. <laughs> Are y'all hearing what I'm saying to you this morning? Somebody, you're in a place for somebody. You're there for somebody. David was in a place for me, people say that. Joseph was in a place for Jacob and all his children along the way. I think about many times how we look around and think, well, why am I here? Why? Am I going through this? God's got a plan. You may not see it. You may not understand it. I'm going to be honest with you. It ain't all for you to understand. But it's just for you to be obedient. Listen, that's why the Bible said let's walk by faith and not by sight. I'm going to tell you something. Walking by sight will mess you up. Walking by sight will mess Joseph up. <laughs> Walking by sight would have messed David up. 
But boy, following God, I walk by faith and not by sight because sometimes what I look at, I don't want to enter in. What I'm looking at, I, I, I know that I got a face. Do you be honest with me today? If you could look back down your road and look down your life and you had an opportunity to relive it, you'd probably say, no, no, I wouldn't have done it. At that time, I wouldn't go through that. But now you look back and say, oh, Lord, thank you that you allowed me to go through all of that so I could get on this side. And so my brother, my sister, my uncle, my aunt, my mama, my daddy, or my husband, my wife, or my children, or my good friends somewhere, and I could be a help on this side, Lord. I made it. I made it on this side. And I'm over here for you. For you. Preacher, it wasn't easy. No, it wasn't for Paul either. The Bible said, oh, Paul was struck blind on the road to Damascus. Y'all hearing me? But when he was struck blind, not only was he struck blind, he was done it for a reason and a purpose so that he could be a help to the Gentiles. Y'all hear me? Not only was he struck blind, but he was shipwrecked three times. Are you hearing me? Not only was he shipwrecked three times, he received 40 stripes, save one. Did he not? Not only did he receive 40 stripes, but he was beaten with a rod. Are you hearing me? Beaten with a rod. Not only was he beaten with a rod, but he was even stoned. And so Paul, wasn't it? But every step of the way, Paul said, I am what I am by the grace of God. Are you hearing me? I am what I am but by the grace of God. So I got anybody in the house say, hey, I've been striped up. I've been marked up. I've been beat up. I've been talked about. I've been low rated. I've been put down. God's brought me up. <laughs> hey, being a child of God, I can't stay there. <laughs> Look at your neighbor and say, being a child of God, you can't stay there. Hey, I, I, I picture you just don't know I'm in Lola Bar. I got something to tell you. Somebody here to get you out. <laughs> Are you here what I'm telling you today? Hey, yeah, you say, preacher, you just don't understand. I, I'm, I'm just way off down here, and, and I feel like there's nothing around me, nobody around me. Oh, I got news to tell you. There's a king looking for you today. <laughs> Are you hearing me? I, I'm telling you, there ain't no Lola Bar. He can't go in. There ain't no devil's hell. He can't walk through. There ain't no trouble or trial. He can't deliver. Are you hearing me? I said, Jesus, come looking for you. And he's called you out on a good Samaritan. I'm telling you, when he found me, brother, I want you to know he found me wounded. He found me beat up where the world done beat me to death, where the Satan done had his way, and he left me half dead. Are you hearing what I'm telling you? Hey, that's the way the enemy done me. And he left me over there, and people walked by me and walked on the other side to go around me. But thank God one day he'll come Jesus. He was walking down the road and he saw the old boy laying over there wounded, broke down, scarred up, messed up. And he walked over there and got me up. Hey, are you hearing me? The only difference was he didn't put me on his beast. He put me on his breast. Or he hugged me up. Hey, am I talking to somebody? I'm telling you, God loves you. And he'll take care of you this morning. And he wants us to do the same for others. Been beat, been battered, been whipped, been done everything you could be. I ask you this morning, show me your scars. Every one of us could show scars of what we've been through stuff. But the reason you've been through it was for me, for your neighbor, for somebody, why you went through it. You don't understand why. You, you may not understand why now. Somewhere, someday, somebody's going to walk up to you, hug your neck, going to be crying on your shoulder, and going to say, this is where I'm at. You're going to say, honey, this may be where you're at. This is where I've been there. Y'all, do y'all know there's a difference in being there and being? <laughs> Come on, y'all. That's a sight, ain't it? There's a difference in being there and, 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 and being there and being there. That takes a whole lot of difference, all right? Been there means I come through it. Hallelujah. I look at somebody and say, hey, I'm here. I'm alive. Amen. There's many of us today going through different trials. I, I could go on and on, talk about different situations that people has went through with their health-wise or, or with their children-wise or whatever-wise, amen, of going on. And you sit there, somebody say, I'm there. Somebody stand up on the other side and say, I've been there. 
there. Amen. So guess what that tells me? You've been there for the ones that's there. And so don't be quiet about it. But tell them, my God, that delivered me out of the hands of the lion. That delivered me out of the hands of the bear. That delivered me out of the hands of the Philistine. Hallelujah. God's good. When you see somebody hurting, don't run from them. Run to them. When you see somebody down, don't run from them. Run to them. Help others while I'm traveling on this journey. Listen to me. None of us live in a perfect place. It's not a perfect life for none of us. We all have aches, pains, troubles, sorrows. We all have ups and downs. The Bible said we, in the last days, the Bible said there's a time for all things. There's a time for mourning. There's a time for weeping. There's a time to laugh. There's a time for joy. There's a time for dance. There's all of that. But whatever time you in, somebody is going in another time. Are you hearing me? Would you say I'll help? Would you say I'll cross over? I'll go to that side. I'll go down that side of the road. I'll be a good Samaritan. Y'all know, and I could go into a lot more details, but there was laws about a good Samaritans, and they there's laws, and we know that now, uh, to where it, when you help somebody, there's good Samaritan laws. And in the United States, if when you help somebody, if while you're trying to get them out of trouble, if you do something to hurt them, there's a, there's a, there's a good Samaritan law that says they can't sue you for that. Amen? So what are you saying? I'm telling you, when you're trying to help somebody for Jesus, He's the best they ever was. Better deliver us and bring us out. I'm asking you this morning, maybe you're here this morning and you're wounded, you're hurt, and, and, and you've served the devil and he's done beat you half dead. That's what the Bible said, he was left half dead. You're left out there right now and you're all out there alone and you're wallowing around and you're thinking, how am I going to make it? Boy, I just come by to tell you, Jesus is here. He's a good Samaritan. He'll walk up to you. He'll bind your wounds. He'll pull the fresh oil in you. He'll fill you up with the presence of God. Y'all hearing me? He'll save you. Not only will he take you to the end, he'll take you to the throne room. Are you hearing me? Church, listen. When I met Jesus, he bypassed the end. Now I'm headed, I'm headed home to glory land. Y'all hear me? Because I'm a child of the king. Listen, you say, well, preacher, he didn't pay. Yes, he did. He paid everything. When the Bible said the good Samaritan went there to the end and took care of him, the next day he went up and told him, he said, I'm going to leave you this. And if I owe you anything, when I come back, I'll repay you for all. My friend Jesus paid everything while he was here to get us to glory. Everything. He didn't leave nothing owed. He ain't got to come back and pay somebody another debt. It was all paid in full. Are y'all hearing me? It was all paid in full. And I'm telling you today, my friend, if you're here and you say, I'm one of those, you may be one wounded today and you need help. Go to somebody and say, can you help me? And surely they will help you. Most of all, God can help you. God will deliver you, bring you out, secure you, do all that needs to be done. Well, Charles, y'all come get a song for us this morning. I'm asking you, thank you for your prayer.